Hey class, I hope everyone is having a good weekend so far. So as we talked about on Friday, we are going to switch things up a little bit and we are actually going to learn our next section here in this video and then we are going to practice it together in class. So it's really important that you watch this complete video before we next see each other on Tuesday just to make sure you are ready to use our time to the best of our ability. So let's jump into it. Today's topic, we are continuing in chapter two, which is all about equations. And today we're moving on to literal equations. Now, a literal equation is in where we include variables to represent all of the values. So it's gonna look similar to what we've been doing, except instead of numbers representing all the values, we have variables. These represent equations or formulas that we often use in real life applications. So this skill is something that's gonna be very helpful for you when you get to physics or for those of you who are already in physics because physics and science, engineering, technology, all use formulas of this nature. Now, in a formula, we aren't always going to get exactly the information we need. For example, if I'm trying to find the speed of something, I might know the distance and the time so I can calculate the speed. But what if I already know the speed and the distance, but I wanna know how much time it's gonna take? Well. I'm solving for a different piece of the equation. So that's a little bit like what we're gonna be doing here today. We are gonna be solving for the given variable. That given variable represents the unknown in our situation. So first, let's use the equation y equals mx plus b. So this is called the slope intercept form. We're gonna be using this later this year to graph lines. So sometimes we'll know certain information, but not necessarily the MX and the B. Maybe we know the Y and the B. Or in this situation, since they want us to solve for Y or solve for B, we need to set up our equation in a way that isolates the variable we're solving for. So we can just plug in the information that we do have, which is the rest of it. So for an equation like this, we are gonna use the same inverse operations we've been using. So that means I am going to look to see what do I need to do to get the variable they want me to solve for alone. So if I'm solving for B, well, here is B in my equation. So I want to think, how can I get it alone? Right now, the y is already on the other side, so I, that's good. But the m and the x, mx, m times x, that is still on the same side as the variable b. But they're being added together, and this is a positive m. So to get the b alone, we're going to do exactly what we would do if this was a number 5y. Well, we want the third wheel. Remember our third wheel rule? We want this by itself. So I am going to subtract my mx. And then I get y minus mx. So I can't actually subtract it because I don't know what those values are. So when it's variables, we're just gonna represent it as y minus mx, what we just did. And that leaves only the b over on this side. So if we're solving for b, then we could say b equals y minus mx. And that would be our answer. We're not gonna get down to a answer like y equals five because we don't have enough information for that. But we can get down to a formula that makes it easier for us to find the information we need. In this case, we would be finding the B. 
Now, here's the same equation, but this time they want us to solve for m. So it's going to be a little bit different this time because we want to isolate the m, the variable m. Now, back to that third wheel rule because I see I have mx plus b. If I want to get to the m to get it alone, I first need to move the third wheel. So that's step number one. Subtract b from both sides. That gives us y minus b equals mx. So we're pretty close. Now it's just m and x on this side, but they didn't want us to solve for mx. They want us to solve just for m. So to get m alone, I ask myself, and always ask yourselves these questions. What operation is happening now? Well, right now it's m times x. So that makes it a little easier for me to identify my inverse operation because I know the inverse of times or multiplication is division. So if I want to separate the m and the x and move the x away, I am going to divide by that x. That eliminates the x on this side and leaves me with y minus b over x equals m. So for my final answer, I'm going to write it like this. Just because when they ask me to solve for m, I like putting what they're looking for first. However, if you turn in this answer, that's fine. I'm not going to take points off because it's the same thing. Our variables can go on either side. Um, this is just a personal preference here. So both of these would be correct, and that is the equation we would use if we wanted to solve for m. Now let's move down to an example that does have a couple numbers in it, our, cons or our um, constants, but we need to separate everything out and solve for only one of the variables. As you can see, we have two variables in this situation. So before I start doing anything, don't just jump into the first operation you see. Stop and think. What do I need to get alone? And I need to get the k alone. So that means I'm going to need to move the negative 2 and the 5. So then I think, okay, how do I move them? Well, I know in a situation like this, the 5 is the third wheel. So to move it, I need to start there. I can't do anything with k minus 2 until I move the 5. It's almost like it's blocking me from getting into the top of this division. So to move the 5, I ask, okay, what's happening now? Well, it's being divided by 5. So I am going to multiply by 5 on both sides. So that eliminates it over here and leaves me with k minus 2 equals, and then we have 5 times 11j. Well, I can do 5 times 11, so 5 times 11 is 55j. Now the reason I didn't need to have com um, like terms is because I'm multiplying. So I can multiply the numbers and keep the variable. If I have 11 j's and then I multiply that five times, I now have 55 j's. So now I've gotten it somewhat alone, um, but I still have the negative two here on the same side as the k. So now I ask what's happening here? We're subtracting two. So what's my inverse operation? Add two to both sides. Now. I want you to think here, what do you think the common mistake would be at this step? Well, the common mistake would be doing 55 plus 2 and writing 57 down here. The reason why is because these are not like terms. And we're adding. When we are adding or subtracting, it has to be like terms. So I can't just add these. I need to write it 
as two separate terms. So we've got 55j plus 2. And then the k is left alone. So that would be our answer. All right. So hopefully you're realizing we're not learning any new steps or strategies. We're just learning how to apply what we know to literal equations that we can use to find certain unknown values. So let's move on. The next equation, P equals 2L plus 2W. Now, does this look familiar? It should. This is our perimeter formula. So let's imagine we're, we're looking for the perimeter. We know to find perimeter, it's two times the length plus two times the width. Now they want us to solve for width. So this would be a situation in which we know the perimeter and we know the length, but we don't know the width. So we have to work backwards and we wanna get the W alone. So I'm gonna just rewrite it just to make it easier to see what I'm doing. I don't wanna make a mistake because I'm a little messy. So now I wanna ask again, same question I've been asking myself for all of these problems. What is the variable I'm isolating? W, where is the W now? Here. What do I need to move to get away from the W? The 2L and then the 2. What do I move first? Well, 2 is being multiplied by W, so they're kind of like a couple. 2L is only being added, so this is the third wheel here. So that's what we're going to move first, and we're going to look at it as if it's just one number. So if this was 5, positive 5, we would subtract to move it. Well, we're going to do the same thing. Even though it's 2L, we can still apply the same rules. So we would subtract 2L from both sides. Now, not like terms. So we cannot do P or uh, subtract these. We have to leave them as P minus 2L equals, now all that's left over here is 2w. Well, now we're closer, but we're solving for w, and it still has the 2 attached to it. So now I need to get rid of that. To do that, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. That now gets my w alone, isolates that variable, and leaves me with P minus 2L over 2. Now, this would be acceptable. This is fine. But we could simplify this equation. And if we can, we always want to. So to simplify it, I can realize, oh, 2L divided by 2 would just be L. So my final equation would be P over 2, because these cancel out, but the P is still being divided by the 2. So P over 2, it doesn't cancel out fully, minus L equals W. Okay? So that would be our final answer. All right, let's flip over to the back side, and you guys are hopefully copying these down, so continue copying these. If you haven't copied yet, go ahead and start copying these questions into or onto a piece of paper as your notes, so you can look back at it when you're doing your homework. All right, next, we want to solve for R. This is our circumference equation, when we are trying to find the circumference of a circle, which you will do in geometry. So this is an important skill to help you be successful next year. Here, we're in this situation, we're solving for r, which means we don't know the radius of our circle. So we want to isolate the r, which represents radius. So 
To get the r alone, we ask what's happening now. 2 times pi times r. Now, I need to separate these. Since it's all multiplication happening, I'm going to separate by division. So, I'm going to divide the two pieces I'm trying to move. I want r alone, so I need to move the 2 and the pi, and they're both being multiplied. So, I can just divide by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi. And that leaves me with c over 2 pi equals r. So r equals c over 2 pi. There you go. So now if we know the, two, the pi, the, <laughs> the pi, which we always know, and the circumference, now we can find the radius of a circle. All right, next one. I want you to try this one on your own. Try it, pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll go over it once you press play again. All right, so in this situation, we are solving for D. The only difference is we have D on two sides. So first thing we wanna do, simplify our equation. If I'm trying to isolate the D, I need to get them all together first. So that's my first step. And I'm gonna look and see, well, if I subtracted three D, I'd end up with a negative D over here. And then I'd have an extra step to do because I'd have to get rid of the negative. So instead, I'm going to subtract D from both sides. That leaves five C equals 2d, now I can subtract these because they're like terms, minus 1. Now, we still want the d alone, so we have to figure out how are we going to get rid of the 2 and the negative 1. Well, first I recognize, okay, I got a third wheel situation here, 2 times d, those are together, and then minus 1, so neg or that's going to be looked at as a negative 1, or minus one. Now this is my third wheel. So I am going to add one to both sides using inverse operations. That gives me five C plus one equals two D. Now I'm closer, but I still need to get the D alone. So to do that, I'm going to divide by two and that gives me 5c plus 1 over 2 equals d. So now I've isolated my variable d, and I can rewrite my final answer and I am good to go. All right, so Hopefully that's feeling pretty good. If it's not, I already gave you guys a video on this in our Look It assignment. So you can go back to that assignment and watch the other video that was created by a different teacher to help you out with this. And you can always look in your textbook. It has great examples. Now, here's your homework. Please make sure to do it. And then have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks, guys.